FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's January 17th, 2018. Well, time marches on. Time waits for no man. It certainly has been marching on very quickly here in the good old United States. Well, where are we heading? Is the deep state in danger, or has Trump been co-opted? Well, Gerald Salente, best person I know to find out the answers there, friendsjournal.com. Gerald, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me on, Gary. Always a pleasure. So there's been talk, deep state, out there to do Trump in, uh, the Trump dossier, the Clinton dossier, uh, the CIA, the FBI, the Department of Justice, everybody out to get him. What's going on here? Well, you know, the, the Department of Justice, what justice? What are you talking about? <laughs> and again, what's new? I mean, the CIA, FBI, NSA. You look at the uh, House of Representatives just passed that, uh, that bill that allows the deep state to look deeper into our lives with warrantless tapping, et cetera. And first Trump came out against it, and then he, the White House approved it. Look who's running. Look who's in the White House. Eisenhower would be turning in his grave. I mean, this this is a guy, Eisenhower, what, uh, five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces in World War II, warns us as he's leaving office that the military-industrial complex is robbing the nation of the genius of scientists, sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children. And who's running the White House now? Oh, yeah, we got the uh, McMaster, we got Mattis, um, you know, what, what's Kelly. Kelly. Kelly? I mean, look at three generals right in there at the top. I mean, this isn't supposed to be in this country. And, and you know, Trump was going to pull out of, you know, we had enough in Afghanistan. Now they're ratcheting that war up. I'm giving the military the freedom to do what they want. Hey, these guys haven't won a war. You're a businessman, Trump. And you talk about successes. You have to make good investments and get a return on your investment. What return on the investment of the military industrial complex has benefited the people by the wars that they've started? They haven't won one since World uh, War II. Uh, yeah. You're going to invest in this? And now they're investing more war in Syria, claiming that they're going to build a, you know, a protection force of 30,000 people. You know, the, the Syrian democratic, you know, what democratic? You know, stop with this stuff. We're in Somalia. You know, so Trump backtracked on what he said he was going to do on the campaign trail. So uh, whether the deep state has them down or is just like all of the rest that lie their way into office, I don't know. But I can see the results. And the results are that the deep state is not the deep state at all. It's right in front of everybody's eyes. All they have, they don't have to look that deep. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it really is in front of your eyes and you see it with the, all of the mass surveillance. I mean, every conversation, you realize, Gerald, that uh, what we're saying right now is being recorded in a place on a server that can be queried by the NSA at any time by virtually anyone. And they're not supposed to spy or or do surveillance on on Americans, not without a warrant. And yet we found out uh, various times, numerous times over the past several years, they've been doing it and abusing it and breaking the law. Supposedly, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, you're right against unreasonable search and seizure, which applies to to your telephone calls, your emails, your texts all of that stuff, they've been monitoring it all. Yeah. They're, they're, what constitution are you talking about? There's no constitution left anymore. It's gone. It's uh, and, and, you know, people complain about, you know, this, the, the, the nation has been ruined by excessive capitalism. This isn't capitalism. It's fascism. Yeah. Yeah. The merger of state and corporate powers. Too big to fail. There's no such, no such term of that in capitalism. You rise and fall on your own merits. Look at all these tax breaks. Look, look at the Trump tax plan. I mean, who does it benefit? The wealthy. What do they say on September 12th? Oh, this isn't going to help the wealthy at all. What does the average person get? The average middle class, the, the shrinking average middle class family. A grand total of what? 900 and something dollars a year? Mm -hmm. And all the benefits have gone to the big corporations and the very wealthy. So, uh, and again, I, I say that as you know, looking at a society in that, you know, we're, we're all in this together. So what do we do to, to the, those that have a lot to give a little? 
and you're not seeing them. Look at the big news they made with this guy Bezos. What is he worth? A hundred and eight billion dollars, and he gives thirty three million dollars for you know dreamer students. Yeah, that's like me leaving a tip at a restaurant. What are you kidding? <laughs> thirty three? Yeah, really? Thirty three yeah. million of a hundred and eight billion, and you're mm-hmm. bragging about it? Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, you, what are you even talking about it? And by the way, this whole immigration issue, everybody that wants more immigrants, and I'm not talking about where they come from. You know, they, there was a thing during the Great Depression. They didn't allow anybody in until the country got back on its feet. Mm. We can't take care of our own now. So anybody that wants more people to come into the country, open up your house to them. Feed yeah. them, clothe them, house them, pay for their medical expenses if you feel so strongly for it. When I look at median household income below 1999 levels, a shrinking middle class, they make a big deal of going back to the Trump uh, tax cuts that Walmart is going to be paying its people $11 an hour. You know, when I was a kid, you know, you could be a short order cook down in Times Square and you could have a, a, a middle class income. You know, it's not about it's not about a minimum wage. It's about paying the people what you could afford to pay them. $11 an hour, I'm not good at math, but you know, it comes out to after taxes, the grand total of living on around $19,000 a year. Yeah. And the Walton family's worth what? $150 billion plus? Yeah. So again, you know, we're a society. We're supposed to, you, you look back to the Gilded Age and you had the Carnegie's. Yeah, he was a terrible guy. A lot of, yeah, but there's a thing called the public library system yeah. and those gorgeous buildings uh, that were built by him. Carnegie Hall. Let's not forget Carnegie Hall, right? Yeah. And what do these guys give? They vaccinate people around the world and they brag about it like Gates. You know, so they're not giving back anything. And so going back to the deep state, it's fascism. It's a takeover. And the country's going down at every level. Pick up the New York Times, the toilet paper of record last Sunday. Uh, Three guys' faces spread across the front page of the New York Times. Mm. Three men. I felt helpless. Three men talk about how they were sexually abused by photographer. Mm -hmm. What, are you kidding me? And then you open it up, two full pages inside the New York Times. Mm -hmm. That's where the news is. So it's not even talking about sexual abuse about women, it's sexual abuse about gays, it's sexual abuse. How about, you know, How about other issues? Is this the major issue of America? So it goes back to where is the country going? Deep state? No. Dumbed down state. It's the state of, of, of imbeciles. Turn on the media every day, every day. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Sexual abuse. The Russians are coming. More sexual abuse. Yeah, well, yeah, there's definitely quite a bit of dumbing down that's taken place. Uh, Whatever happened to the concept of critical thought, Gerald? You know? Yeah, well, again, all of these marches, and again, sexual abuse is terrible, but, you know, we're talking about a few people and trying to make a whole, you know, uh, uh, society like that is just dividing the nation more. Where are all these people protesting the murderous wars that Americans, America is committing in Libya, in Syria, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Somalia, in Yemen. Where are all these people that are so against abuse, not talking about mass murder of millions? Mm. Yeah, good question. Where are they? Well, um, (laughs) I'd like to know the answer to that. So, Economy-wise, gold had a really good year last year. It was up 13%, although not much compared to the uh, stock market. What are, you, what are you forecasting for the coming year, coming couple of years, as far as precious metals go? It all depends on the dollar. And right now, the dollar has been under pressure 
We lost about what, about seven percent last year, mm-hmm. and um, because other nations are raising interest rates. But what are they raising? I mean, Canada raised it. They did nothing. They're still at, at nothing levels. Even if they raise interest rates another three times this year, what are we talking about? Seventy-five basis points. You know, mm-hmm. they, they're still at historic lows. It depends on the dollar. Period. Paragraph. The dollar gets stronger. Gold gets weaker. Dollar gets weaker, gold gets stronger, and that's why you're seeing gold going up. So we still believe gold. We, I've been saying this for four years. I haven't changed it. Gold's downside risk, I had said, was around 1100 and it has to break over strongly over 1400, 1450, 1480, 1460, 1480, you know, back and forth on that. Right. And then it'll take a real Bitcoin bounce in the sense that it'll skyrocket, we believe, uh, to, to 2000 and above. But it has to break strongly above that 1450 mark, mark which is, has not done. So, and also looking at gold, with the crypto markets under a lot of pressure now because so many countries are either banning or making plans to ban it, a lot of money that you saw going into cryptocurrencies will be going back into gold, we, we, we're forecasting. So overall, you know, we, we still see a, a strong future for gold. It's the ultimate safe haven asset. And of course, China is now buying oil, not in paying for it in dollars, petrodollars, but in yuan. And who they give the yuan to, they're saying you could cash this into gold. So, and China and India and Russia are buying up a lot of gold. So we still see a very strong gold future. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, phenomena and really the the retail end definitely has gone down in the US and uh, perhaps in Europe too but the sovereign buying has done nothing but go up yeah and and they're backing their currencies on it and uh, so we we think that um, you know our forecast is again as i said at this point we see another what 100 150 dollar tops uh, decline uh, in gold, that, that, and, but that's not a lot. That's that's what we're saying is the bottom of, of the gold market. If it drops, that's no, that's a very low risk number. Uh, but again, it has to strongly break above the fourteen fifty mark, as we forecast it to see it really skyrocket. Yeah, so that's a big resistance point, and it's going to take a lot to get there. Especially, it's at thirteen forty now. Perhaps not in the beginning of the year, but maybe later, uh, towards the third, fourth quarter. You know, it could very well happen. Well, there are other elements, and that is that we we see war heating up in the Middle East. All this anti-Iranian. I've, I mean, I, that goes right next to the Russians are coming. Let's hate the Iranians. Uh, you know, people forget, of course, they don't forget, they don't know, mm. and they don't care to know that, that the United States had, along with the MI6 of the UK, and a, and a report came out last June from the CIA that everybody talked about for years, but now that the oh, facts yeah. and, and, and the language is there for anybody that wants to see it, that could see it and read, is that the CIA and the MI6 of the UK overthrew the democratically led on when he nationalized the oil. Yeah. And Winston, may he rot in hell, Churchill, who everybody loves, that little freak, he, he says right there that they need Iranian oil mm. and they don't want it nationalized. And the United States at first wouldn't go along with it. And again, this is all the CIA report. Anybody yeah, can read, I read it. it? And Kermit Alexander, uh, Roosevelt, Kermit the Frog, Kermit Roosevelt, Greenberg, Iceberg, what's the difference? A jerk. Yeah. Uh, his great grandfather was, was Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, after a failed U.S. coup attempt, he and, they, and the CIA said, we're not going to do another one. He did one anyway, and they overthrew Mossadegh and put right. back in the Shah, this, this ruthless dictator. And it was all about oil. And the United States at first wouldn't go along with it. And then they came up with this scam that Mossadegh is a commie. Right. You got to get that commie out of there. <laughs> this is during the Cold War. Yes. So going back to now, they keep putting out, and Trump is trumping it the loudest of the hate Iran. 
uh, line. And Iran is the greatest terror threat in the world and on and on. Those are what the White House is saying. And that it was the worst deal ever made by having them, uh, the nuclear disarmament agreement. And we gave them, what, $150 billion. We didn't give them anything. It was their money that the United States stole when they overthrew uh, uh, the Shah back in 1979. So anyway, that's what we're concerned about. And I'm saying that because if war breaks out in the Middle East and you have Israel, Saudi Arabia, and and I'm not making this up. It's in the mainstream media for those who want to read the Financial Times and others that and Wall Street Journal even that this. These three countries are, you know, fighting against Iran. So if war breaks out in the Middle East with Iran, gold prices will skyrocket, oil prices will spike, and then you will see a black swan event that will drag down the overvalued equity markets around the world. But if uh, if none of that happens, then then it's going to be more of the same until it does happen. Exactly. They're going to keep and again with the Trump tax plan, with the with the corporate taxes going from 35 to 21 percent and bringing allowing them to bring back all that money overseas, you know, basically free. You go back to 2004 when George murder of Bush allowed the corporations to do that again, repatriate the money they weren't mm. paying taxes on. Where did that money go? It didn't go into capital improvements. No. It went into stock buybacks. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Oh, and that's what that. we're going to see again. So as long as the stock buybacks continue, the market keeps going up. And again, when you're looking at corporate profits, they've been doing very well. But the, So they're making profit now. They didn't need a tax break. And although they've made very, very strong profits, you have not seen money going back into capital improvements. It's all. only been going into stock buybacks. That's a fact. Yep, this is true. There's no no debating it. Uh, that is the fact. And right, who knows how long the party could go on for. Uh, you know, the war drums are beating, but how strong they're beating, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to see. So trends for for the country, uh, what your average person deals with every day. Uh, inflation, you know, supposedly in check, but we know better. Uh, we can continuing on the same way here with uh, the so-called inflation rate. No, I think we we think inflation is going to spike up uh, more. And uh, as you mentioned, it's a phony number they're giving us. That's just so they don't have to pay people that in Social Security more money. So they that Bill Bill Slick Willie Clinton is the one that started that one. <laughs> And uh, they, so they, they rig the inflation rates. Everybody that's living, working and living and, and knows that it's how expensive it is to live and it keeps getting worse with health care and oh. all the other costs involved. So uh, no, we're going to see more inflation. Uh, yeah. We think this year it'll probably spike uh, probably above 2% mm-hmm. on the official number, but right. much actually in reality higher than that as real wages continue to lag. Hey, and. Like you said, insurance, health care. I don't remember the last time I ever saw my auto insurance bill go down or my health care insurance for that matter. It just doesn't happen. No. And, and again, look at the, you know, the cost of living. I mean, everything you go, everything, you know, it's, it's uh, people are having a very difficult time making ends meet. What is it? 78% of the people living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Shopping. And again, the tax, the Trump, Trump, you know, again, you know, I'm a political atheist. I call things the way I see them. That's not a like, dislike. Yeah, that's what it is. And you know, I was, we were the first magazine to call Trump a winner back in May of 2016. Mm-hmm. We were the first ones out of, and everybody that knows me over the years, I was very negative on the markets, thought they were going to do a terrible collapse. And as soon as Trump got elected, we did a 180 on it and mm-hmm. said, oh no, this is real. This is going to be, well, everybody was saying, you know, you look what happened to the Dow futures when it, when it showed that he was going to win. They went down almost 900 points uh, on election eve. And uh, so anyway, so it's not, you know, that I like him, dislike him. It's what is. And the what is is that yeah. he sold himself as a populist and that it was going to be more for the people. And it hasn't. It's, it's just enriched the rich even richer. And the rich are the stock markets. Mm-hmm. Because here's another fact. 90% of all the stocks are owned by 10% of the American public. Mm-hmm. That 10% on average has about $350,000 worth of stocks. Mm-hmm. The rest of the 10% that's owned by the middle class, the average holding is only about $15,000. Really? Those are facts. 
Mm. So again, the markets go up. It doesn't. It doesn't trickle down. No, not at all. Well, you know, it's uh, <laughs> till the people uh, get tired of taking it, right? You know, what can yeah, the average but, person they, but do? But again, this, this is a country of cowards. Like I said, you know, where, where, where are the demonstrations about mass murder going on around the world? You know, where, where, where are the demonstrations about, you know, the, the very, the, you know, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a libertarian. I'm not in anything. I believe in laws. I believe in stop signs. Mm. You know, I believe in, you know, not murdering innocent people. I believe in laws. And I believed in the laws that prohibited the bigs from owning everything. Mm-hmm. The monopolies. Absolutely. And and they did away with the Robinson Patman Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act. And and and, and again, you know, the people love their freaks. They love that little peanut farmer, Jimmy Carter. He's a little slimer that started this whole decline. Yeah. You know, yeah, they had laws in place with the airlines and he deregulated it. I used to fly first class when I was a young guy. The job I had, you know, you know, I was like 25 years old back in the 70s. Mm-hmm. It was a thrill to fly. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, 150 airlines. And everybody knew when they deregulate, they had regulations. You only could earn, make so much money. And airlines used to fight among each other to gain more people by the service they provided. Right. So now what do we got? We got a monopoly now. What do we got? Two companies that own the whole damn thing. Yeah, it so like then it. Jimmy Carter is also the one that did away with usury laws. Mm-hmm. You weren't allowed to charge 30%. 20% on, on credit cards and all this other stuff. When I was a kid growing up in, in the Bronx and Yonkers, they used to call them loan sharks. Yeah. And we're getting 15%. Oh, how terrible this is. Yeah, but now that we'll let our buddies do it, it's okay. Because we're a bunch of little slimy people that we'll call politicians. Mm-hmm. And we get paid off from that by them from them to do what they want. And morons call it campaign contributions. Adults mm-hmm. call it bribes and payoffs. Mm-hmm. So going back to the decline of the country, all the money putting in the hands of the few, it began under Carter. It accelerated under Reagan, went into high gear under, under that low life piece of garbage, Clinton, mm-hmm. and it kept accelerating through. And now you have, again, I'm not making this up. You got three people in the United States, Buffett, Bezos, and Gates, that have more money than 60% of us combined. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's a bleak, uh, a bleak future. Hopefully something will happen. People will wise up and... I don't see it happening. You know, hope, hopefully. That's like <laughs> saying hope and change you can believe in. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I've seen that firsthand, and uh, not much you can believe in there, that's for sure. No, that's what I mean. Hope isn't the word. Again, read the headline. This is this is a half-page, front-page Sunday, New York Times, January 14th. I felt helpless. Male models accuse photographers of sexual exploitation. Mm-hmm. A yeah. half a page story, you open it up, and it's two page spread inside with these terrible photos. They're not talking about, hey, what's going on in Tunisia? Hey, you read about what's going on in Yemen lately? Hey, they finished counting the votes yet over there in Honduras? What happened over there? Oh, yeah, forget about that. Mm-hmm. Male models say photographers crossed sexual line. So why didn't you fight back? Mm. <laughs> You would think, wouldn't you? Well, I guess that's about it for today, Gerald. So uh, any events coming up? Uh, Are you doing anything these days? Well, uh, not yet. No, uh, we may be doing something uh, actually to keep promoting Occupy Peace, and that's our that's our main objective at this point because we're very concerned about the the drum beats to war. And by the way, we're not concerned about North Korea. If the United States attacks North Korea, say goodbye to South Korea. You know, yeah. it's what is it? Thirty Seoul, South Korea, twenty four million people yeah. in the metropolitan area with thirty five miles of North Korea border. So we don't see any problem there. Probably but not. we're concerned concerned about the the deep state, as you mentioned. All right. Hey, you got any questions for Gerald or myself? Feel free to email us at kl at com. The Twitter feeds at Lutz, and it's been pretty active lately. And the Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Hey, Gerald, it's always great speaking with you, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Kerry. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. 
It's all about what's next. 33, really? 33 yeah. million of 108 billion? And you're mm-hmm. bragging about it? Mm. Yeah, what are, you, what are you even talking about it? And by the way, this whole immigration issue, everybody that wants more immigrants, and I'm not talking about where they come from. You know, they, there was a thing during the Great Depression. They didn't allow anybody in until the country got back on its feet. Mm. We can't take care of our own now. So anybody that wants more people to come into the country, open up your house to them. Feed yeah. them, clothe them, house them, pay for their medical expenses if you feel so strongly for it. When I look at median household income below 1999 levels, a shrinking middle class, they make a big deal of going back to the Trump uh, tax cuts that Walmart is going to be paying its people $11 an hour. You know, when I was a kid, you know, you could be a short order cook down in Times Square and you could have a, a, a middle class income. You know, it's not about it's not about a minimum wage. It's about paying the people what you could afford to pay them. And $11 an hour, I'm not good at math, but you know, it comes out to after taxes, the grand total of living on around $19,000 a year. Yeah. And the Walton family's worth what? $150 billion plus? Yeah. So again, you know, we're a society. We're supposed to, you, you look back to the Gilded Age and you had the Carnegie's. Yeah, he was a terrible guy. A lot of, yeah, but there's a thing called the public library system yeah. and those gorgeous buildings uh, that were built by him. Carnegie Hall. Let's not forget Carnegie Hall, right? Yeah. At any time by virtually anyone. And they're not supposed to spy or, or do surveillance on on Americans, not without a warrant. And yet we found out uh, various times, numerous times over the past several years, they've been doing it and abusing it and breaking the law, supposedly the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, your right against unreasonable search and seizure, which applies to to your telephone calls, your emails, your texts, all of that stuff. They've been monitoring it all. Yeah. They're, they're, what constitution are you talking about? There's no constitution left anymore. It's gone. It's uh, and and you know people complain about you know this the 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 nation has been ruined by excessive capitalism. This isn't capitalism. It's yeah. fascism. Yeah. Yeah. The merger of state and corporate powers. Too big to fail. There's no such no such term of that in capitalism. You rise and fall on your own merits. Look at all these tax breaks. Look look at the Trump tax plan. I mean, who does it benefit? The wealthy. What do they say on September 12th? Oh, this isn't going to help the wealthy at all. What does the average person get? The average middle class, the, the shrinking average middle class family. A grand total of what? 900 and something dollars a year? Mm-hmm. And all the benefits have gone to the big corporations and the very wealthy. So, uh, and again, I, I say that as you know, looking at a society in that, you know, we're, we're all in this together. So what do we do to, to the, those that have a lot to give a little? And you're not seeing them. Give, look at the big news they made with this guy Bezos. What is he worth? $108 billion and he gives $33 million for, you know, dreamer students. Yeah. That's like me leaving a tip at a restaurant. What are you kidding? <laughs> and what do these guys give? They vaccinate people around the world and they brag about it like Gates. You know, so they're not giving back anything. And so going back to the deep state, it's fascism. It's a takeover. And the country's going down at every level. Pick up the New York Times, the toilet paper of record last Sunday. Uh, Three guys faces spread across the front page of the New York Times. Mm. Three men. I felt helpless. Three men talk about how they were sexually abused by photographer. Mm -hmm. What are you kidding me? And then you open it up two full pages inside the New York Times. Mm. That's where the news is. So it's not even talking about sexual abuse about women. It's sexual abuse about gays. It's sexual abuse. How about, you know, how about other issues? Is this the major issue of America? So it goes back to where is the country going? Deep state? No. Dumb down state. Mm. It, it, it's the state of, of, of imbeciles. Turn on the media every day, every day. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Sexual abuse. The Russians are coming. More sexual abuse. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, there's definitely quite a bit of dumbing down that's taken place. Uh, whatever happened to the concept of critical thought, Gerald? You know? Yeah, well, again, all of these marches, and again, sexual abuse is terrible, but, you know, we're talking about a few people and trying to make a whole, you know, uh, uh, society like that is just dividing the nation more. Where are all these people protesting through a complex is robbing the nation of the genius of scientists, sweat of the laborers and the future of the children, and who's running the White House now? Oh, yeah, we got the uh, McMaster, we got Mattis, um, you know, what, what's yeah. Kelly? I mean, look at three generals right in there at the top. I mean, this isn't supposed to be in this country. And, and you know, Trump was going to pull out of, you know, we had enough in Afghanistan. Now they're ratcheting that war up. I'm giving the military the freedom to do what they want. Hey, these guys haven't won a war. You're a businessman, Trump. Mm. And you talk about successes. You have to make good investments and get a return on your investment. What return on the investment of the military industrial complex has benefited the people by the war? that they've started. They haven't won one since World uh, War II. You're going to invest in this? And now they're investing more war in Syria, claiming that they're going to build a, you know, a protection force of 30,000 people. You know, the, the Syrian democratic, you know, what democratic? You know, stop with this stuff. We're in Somalia. You know, so Trump backtracked on what he said he was going to do on the campaign trail. So uh, whether the deep state has them down or is just like all of the rest that lie their way into office, I don't know, but I can see the results, and the results are that the deep state is not the deep state at all. It's right in front of everybody's eyes. All they have, they don't have to look that deep. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it really is in front of your eyes, and you see it with the, all of the mass surveillance. I mean, every conversation, you realize, Gerald, that uh, what we're saying right now is being recorded in a uh, place on a server that can be queried by the NSA. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's January 17th, 2018. Well, time marches on. Time waits for no man. It certainly has been marching on very quickly here in the good old United States. Well, where are we heading? Is the deep state in danger, or has Trump been co-opted? Well, Gerald Salente, best person I know to find out the answers there, friendsjournal.com. Gerald, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me on, Gary. Always a pleasure. So there's been talk, deep state out there to do Trump in, uh, the Trump dossier, the Clinton dossier, uh, the CIA, the FBI, the Department of Justice, everybody out to get them. What's going on here? Well, you know, the, the Department of Justice, what justice? What are you talking about? <laughs> and again, what's new? I mean, the CIA, FBI, NSA. You look at the uh, House of Representatives just passed that, uh, that bill that allows the deep state to look deeper into our lives with warrantless tapping, et cetera. And first Trump came out against it, and then he, the White House approved it. Look who's running. Look who's in the White House. Eisenhower would be turning in his grave. I mean, this this is a guy, Eisenhower, what, uh, five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces in World War II, warns us as he's leaving office that the military industrial